Welcome back to the Sports Bank Zone. All right. The embattled former president of the TTFA, not William Wallace this time, but David John Williams, has issued a statement and put supporting documents with that statement, which he says contradicts some key claims made in that damning documentary done by Garden Media Limited about his role in the home of football project in TNT. The John Williams apologia runs for seven pages, and we are sharing the full picture with you. It begins... Well, there was, uh, the, the, well, he introduced a statement by saying that he was objecting to the claims made by Mark Massant, the lead investigative reporter for Guarded Media Limited, in his reports, and that he was providing documentation to support his claim that he was innocent of the, well, he was not guilty of the claims made. So, he's quoting Mark Massant's statement, which he labels a false statement. He says... Shipping sources say, this is quoting Mark Massant now from that documentary, that Panama uh, Trail, Secret Trail documentary. Shipping sources say that John Williams told them he didn't have any U.S. currency to clear the containers, even though in 2017 FIFA gave the TTFA that $2 million U.S. dollars in funding towards the Homo Football Project under FIFA's Forward Development Program. In addition to the funding from the FIFA Forward Development Program for the project, the TTFA got another 1.25 million US dollars. This money came from the annual allocation given by FIFA to all federations to assist with operational costs of national associations. After the disbursement of the project's funding, FIFA's development program manager, Solomon Mudej, in July 2017, made a list of stipulations which the TTFA should follow. Here's what David John Williams says in the statement of fact. He says, FIFA did not, in 2017, give the TTFA $2 million US dollars in funding towards the Home of Football Project under FIFA's Forward Development Program. The TTFA did not, in 2017, John Williams says, get another US $1.25 million to assist in its operational cost. He says what actually happened, David John Williams, was that as of July 2017, the TTFA had not even yet submitted its application for the Home of Football Project. The TTFA's application was submitted on August 15, 2017, and was approved by FIFA on September 5, 2017. The TTFA received its first disbursement of 900,000 US in November 2017. Further, the lease for the land to be used for the project was given on August 3, 2017, by the TNT government. No approval could have been given by FIFA without this lease. Additionally, in 2017, the TTFA, as well as all member associations of FIFA, received a sum of 500,000 US dollars for its operational costs. The TTFA did not, David John Williams says, receive 1.25 million US. So, that's what he's saying. A key claim made in the documentary by Mark Bassand. And David John Williams is saying, well, no, we, the, the dates that you said, we got the money. Those the monies, those dates are wrong. And the amount you say we got, those amounts are wrong. Spitting over many tranches, we did not get that amount. And he attached to the statement some documents signed by the government to show when he got the lease for the land to build the home of football and also when he submitted the proposal to FIFA and of course when FIFA approved the uh, well approved the project that was submitted so he issued that to say that yeah the claims are wrong the dates misalign and there is nothing there for us we're supposed to be joined by Keith Lucloy I don't know if he's on the line he is thank you very much Keith good afternoon welcome to the sports bank zone good afternoon boss good afternoon Jamaica and Caribbean all right, before I go to you, there was a statement issued by United TTFA in light of the developments at FIFA, where FIFA said, well, there was nothing to address where the suspension of a member was concerned. Do we have that graphic? United TTFA statement? All right, we don't have that. All right, Keith, since you're here, what is it that United TTFA have said coming out of that FIFA Congress from Zurich, but which of course, which is a virtual event. What is this position of United TTFA at this time? Well, we were not surprised at the fact that um, there was no no discussion, no motion for suspension on the item four. We always expected this. Um, 
because of course we knew that the procedural arrangement to put a suspension before the Congress uh, um, and to table it on the Congress floor uh, had not been followed. Um, in addition to that, <clears throat> that's the legal take on it. The, the, our political take on it is that, of course, and it turns out that we, we were right, are right, that um, the, the president of, uh, of FIFA and his people will look to go to a much smaller group than the 211 uh, representatives of the different national associations. They will now look to go to the Bureau of the Council, as it is called, which comprises seven people. Because, of course, it's much easier to convince seven people to levy this suspension, this disciplinary action, than to um, convince 75% of 211 people, who you would have to then have a discussion. And we know for a fact that there were people poised to pose some difficult questions on the Congress floor. So that has been bypassed. And now, of course, we have a new deadline. And they will no doubt take it to um, the same people who impose the normalization committee. That's Infantino and some representatives from the different confederations. They need four people to make um, a decision on, um, on, a, on a global scale that has global implication. That just doesn't sound right, but that's how it is. So the, the question is, though, Keith Lucloy, if it is that this thing is going to, I, I, I'm going to call them a group. One, one person I spoke to in TT today called it a cabal of FIFA. And I, well, I left that alone. That was their impression. But I just have to reflect to the viewers how this thing is brewing and how FIFA is being typecast by certain people in Trinidad and Tobago who have an interest in this fight. If it is that this thing goes to that group and the inevitable happens then, what would have been the price of the fight that United TTFA have mounted against FIFA that would have led to the suspension? Well, one, one, one could define it as a price to be paid. One could define it as well, perhaps, on, or probably on the other side of the equation, could define it as a benefit one. Um, look, Trinidad and Tobago as a whole, the population, and specifically within that, the football community, if I could call it that, is um, divided, probably evenly down the middle, just like um, uh, Trinidad and Tobago party politics is. There are people on both sides. Um, the, 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 the Wallace administration was elected to be the leadership of everybody in, in Trinidad and Tobago football. And therefore, we are mindful even now that the, dead, the first deadline anyway um, passed, and uh, now we have a new one, which is what, next week Wednesday. We are mindful. Since um, that new deadline arrived, I have been on the phone talking to people in my constituency, which is the Trinidad and Tobago Super League, and outside of it, um, to get a feeling. Has your position changed? Um, do you have a new view on this? What do you think we should do? Some people want to paint a picture of a handful of people, Angus Eve yesterday described it as a, as a gang. William Wallace was elected by 60% of the football electorate. Let me repeat that. He was elected by 60% of the football electorate. In a, a, I mean, a total show, right? There was a total turnout for that election. He's not the leader of a gang. We have differences with people on how to resolve this issue. But even some of the people who disagree with us are fully aware and endorse the viewpoint that this normalization committee was imposed to hide the scandal that is unfolding um, on, the, on, 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 on the outside in other media houses and um, that Mark Basant has put before the, the country as a whole, the region, and I guess within a couple of weeks, the globe as a whole. But, 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 right? but, 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 but hold on, Keith, but hold on. Look, I, 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 I'm, I'm being careful here because of the time constraints we have, not to stress into which administration has committed less sins than the other, because you and I know very well that there are some serious claims to be made against the William Wallace stewardship of how he has gone about his business. So I'm not buying, for one, this idea 
of William Wallace as well, either white or black Jesus who has come to save TTFA from what David John Williams did to it. I, so I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to, be go, to, to go there because there's a lot to say there. I'm saying, let's, let's focus on this. I'm saying, are you saying to me that given what FIFA has done, extended the deadline, moved this decision from the body congress to a very small segment of the body congress, that you would have taken this as a moral victory. And maybe it is your position will, if not soften, change, and perhaps we could see a withdrawal of this thing from the TNT High Court, carrying it to CAS, satisfying what FIFA wants so that football in Trinidad and Tobago can move on. That is the question for you, sir. Well, I'll respond to two, to two parts of your, of your question. We don't see it as a moral victory. We think that what we would have wanted was a discussion on the grass floor by, by, by all the members, yes? And not just by a handful of people, four people making such an important decision. That said, um, it is always possible that um, we could revisit. I, I just said, I've spent the entire day talking to people to see how their position has changed. And what's the temperature of that? What's, what's the temperature of those talks? Some what's the temperature of those talks? Are saying no, on principle, we have to maintain the same position. Some are saying, well, you know, maybe we should look at the cast option again. Um, some are saying, we stand with you on the principle, but we, 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 in reality, we don't want to see football bans. So there's a range of opinion. So that, the, means that means you need a meeting, Keith Lucloy. That means you need a meeting. The skill is to... That, mean, that means you need a meeting to put a question to the members, not just your constituents, but all of those who would have supported you up to this point. And what is true is that you have strong support in Trinidad and Tobago, because if you didn't, we perhaps wouldn't be here. So clearly you have strong support for the action that you took. So I'm suggesting that clearly as well, you need to bring all those constituents together to have a referendum, to have a vote, to say, what do we do? Do we continue? Or do we discontinue and abide by what FIFA have asked for and see if we can get the pound of flesh another way? Is, is that what you're likely to do from this moment? Well, I, I won't say we likely to do. Listen, as you well know and appreciate this, this um, uh, uh, decision, if I call it that, of FIFA dropped on us just a few hours ago. So what we have already, and we had, we've had discussion, both within the group and outside of the group. Um, what we have agreed is that we will dis continue to discuss it over the next 48 hours, Saturday, Sunday, weekend. And by the time we get to the, um, the top of the new, we should have an idea of how we want to approach. Part of the discussion we'll be having over the weekend, and I repeat, is with people um, who both support and don't support. And why you, don't you support and why do you support, but don't want us to go all the way? Yes, so... It is, a, it is a dynamic situation, I'll admit that. It's a situation in flux. We're not deaf to the reasoning of people who are opposed. We listen to that every day. I do, I can guarantee you that. But we also listen to that constituency which, was, which is saying, to hell with it, we have to stand up on this. We cannot be bored and have people just come in here and tell us what to do. Now, having said that, a return to caste that has been tabled, We'll discuss it. I cannot speak for the entire group, and I cannot speak this early into the period that has now appeared upon us. How many, how many members in the United TTFA the extra group? time, so to speak. How, how, many, how many members in the United TTFA group? There's six of us. The four officers, um, Anthony Harford, who is the president of the Northern Football Association, one of the six regions, and I am president of the Trinidad and Tobago Super League. All right. I'm also a board member. So, so since or, you said... Well, the board has been suspended in the, in the fantasy of um, FIFA. Um, the, the Justice Gobin in the High Court didn't agree with that or hasn't yet. But um, I'm also a board member. So since you... So, so there are six of us. Since you say that there are a range... Well, there are differing views within the group of six... And uh, you, so when are you likely to have a round table with everybody to say, ladies and gentlemen, let's vote on something. Register what your, 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 what your rationale is, but also register a vote. Can we expect that meeting by Monday, by Sunday, by when? Okay, let me clear it up again. I didn't say what there were differences within the group. I no, I didn't say differences. I said a range. I said a range of different opinions, yes. That appear to us and that people are putting before us. Yes. That's a different thing. Yes. But 
Again, having said that, what we have um, agreed during the course of today is that we will continue to monitor the situation, talk to our people, and by the time we get to the, the new part uh, or the early part of the new week, we have on Wednesday, then um, we, 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 we should have a much clearer, or have formulated a much clearer idea of how we want to proceed. In, okay. in principle, it may be um, that we, 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 we go with one option, which is people are saying we, we want to go back to cast. It may be that we say no, we stand in firm because there's a strong body of opinion that says, forget it, we'll survive, let's go ahead, and whatever ban we get, we'll deal with it. Hmm. All right. You are not telling me when you're having that meeting, fine. But you are confirming, though, as we, as we, as we, as we wrap this discussion, Keith Lucloy, that what is true is that the position has softened, if not collectively in the United TTFA, among some members. And because the situation is now one that is in flux, you are minded to see if there is a different course of action that can be taken. I'm paraphrasing. Is that, does that represent what the position of United TTFA is as we break? No. Uh, let me put a final point on it. And let me nuance it a little bit. I'm not saying that the position has softened. I'm saying that we, in extra time, we're playing to win. And I'm saying that we tactics will change. Um, you, you are a football man, who am I? I'm saying that we have to look at how we want to play the extra time. That's all. Hear you on that. Hear you on that. I watch with, well, we'll be in touch over the break to see what happens over the next few days. And when the new week comes, you've been stressing that, the new week will bring a lot, a lot of clarity to all these positions, I'm sure. Thank you very much, Keith Lucloy. My pleasure. United TTFA member Keith Lucloy, they're talking about the situation in Trinidad and Tobago football. No ban yet. FIFA has moved the September 16 deadline to a September 23 deadline. The United TTFA, the group which has taken FIFA to court, the Supreme Court in Trinidad and Tobago, they say that their members have given their views in light of the extension of the deadline and that there will be a position defined and pursued by early in the new week. We were to have the head of the Normalization Committee, Robert Haddad. We had some issues there connecting with him. And uh, yeah, we'll be advancing those discussions at another time. We take a break and move on with the show after.